Hello, my name is Martin Sehnoutka, and I work as a software engineer for Red Hat. And uh, I would like to share with you uh, my experience with Packet, and it's a tool for easier integration of your upstream projects into uh, Fedora. So, first of all, uh, let me <laughs> Stress that there is a hemming distance of one from packet to packet. That's the solar uh, sponsor of uh, all systems go, and it's something completely different. So uh, today I will try to explain uh, what problems is packet trying to solve, and how you can get started uh, using the CLI tool and also the service. So. Uh, First of all, let me briefly introduce you uh, into packaging. So I think you all know that uh, packages are a very popular way to consume software. And uh, I personally uh, almost uh, never install things from uh, upstream, except for some, I don't know, nightly compilers or something like this. Uh, so it would be really nice if the interaction between downstream and upstream was a little bit better, because uh, downstream maintainers often don't interact with upstream at all. I have this nice example of a software that I used to work with. It's very popular uh, implementation of FTP daemon, it's called VSFTPD, and this is uh, our package. As you can see, we have like almost 60 patches on top of the upstream version because the interaction is, uh, well, there is no interaction. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so, for example, when a packager wants to do an update, there, is, uh, there are a few tasks that the packager needs to do. For example, um, download the source tarball, upload it to our disk repository, modify the spec file, refresh all those patches, build the RPM, create update, etc., etc. And it's mostly boring, especially for upstream developers because uh, I guess if upstream developers tried to support all Linux distros, they wouldn't do anything else. So that's uh, why we are trying to help with packaging. So Packet has uh, these goals. It's trying to por partially automate the task of uh, packaging software. And I must stress that it's only partial help because it's not uh, possible to completely automate the process of packaging. Then uh, it's also trying to create some easier interaction between downstream maintainers and upstream developers. And finally, in uh, those cases, like I was uh, showing uh, with VSFTPD, it uh, provide, uh, ni provides a uh, like uh, easier way to manage uh, disk git for maintainers with uh, source git. I will explain later. So you can use packet uh, either through CLI or as a service. And uh, again, please note that packet CLI is not a client for the service. Right now it's actually uh, more capable than the service because the service has some uh, problems with authentication against uh, Fedora infrastructure. So currently it cannot do all that the command line client can do. So what can the command line client do for you? Well, as I said, uh, it's about uh, bringing uh, upstream and downstream together. So uh, on the top, you have the upstream repository. Currently, I think they only support GitHub, maybe GitLab, but they are definitely uh, working on it. And 
if you want to, uh, for example, create an update uh, for uh, Fedora Distgit uh, repository, you can generate it automatically from GitHub release. So whenever there is a new release, you just type uh, packet propose update and it will download the, uh, the sources, upload them, uh, modify the spec file, and propose this change as a pull request to our Federalist Git. You can also use it to uh, trigger builds in our community build service. So when you're working on some new features in uh, your upstream project, you can uh, quickly see if uh, the RPM still builds. And you can also build the RPM in our, in our build, ser build service and then propose update. So this is how it uh, looks like. When you run the packet command line tool in uh, CLI, and it looks very simple, right? Well, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, in order to uh, execute such simple command, you need all of this configuration. So if you want to know the status of your uh, project in Fedora, you need uh, to create the configuration file it, uh, in uh, config slash packet.yaml and you need to generate the GitHub token, you need to generate Pezure user token. Uh, if you don't know, Pezure is the web UI we use for this git. And unfortunately, you also need a Kerberos ticket for uh, Fedora. And you also need a SSH key uh, in your Fedora account. So that sounds like a lot of work. Unfortunately, uh, this is how Packet works like now. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, when you do all of this, you can, uh, as, as I said, you can create source RPM, propose the update, build it, and create the update in, uh, in Bodhi. So uh, let me show you some examples. For example, yo, uh, so this is uh, the this is the diskit repository that is completely maintained by a uh, packet. Oh, sorry. This is uh, our uh, repository that is completely maintained by packet. And as you can see in pull request, three more. all of uh, the updates were automatically generated. I didn't have to do anything except for uh, except for accepting these PRs and well this is not really interesting what is interesting is here it uh, was able to automatically uh, update the spec file create a changelog entry and uplo upload the new sources so, yeah, uh, when you, then when you merge this uh, PR, you can easily build uh, the new RPM and propose it to Fedora. Okay, let's go back. Uh, yes, uh, again, this needs some uh, configuration. So they have this uh, little YAML file in the upstream repository. But even though it's uh, pretty long, I don't think it uh, contains uh, any magic, basically just specifying uh, where you can find the spec file, how uh, the package uh, is named in uh, Fedora, was the upstream name, because sometimes there is a difference the downstream package has a different name than the upstream project, simply because the name was already occupied. And the rest is just about uh, 
what uh, branches you want to build, etc. It's nothing, uh, nothing complicated. Yeah, so this is uh, what I have already mentioned. Uh, I don't think that uh, all upstream developers have uh, Fedora accounts, and that's unfortunately nothing you can do. About, do. There is nothing I can do about it right now. You just need one. Or uh, you can wait until uh, packet developers uh, remove this, uh, this condition. OK. And uh, what to do if you don't have, if you are a maintainer F and you don't have access to the upstream repository? This is a common case for maintainers in Red Hat. Uh, in that case, you can uh, create uh, something they call a source git. It's a fork. So on GitHub, you create a fork of the upstream repository. You rebase uh, commits that contain the spec file and maybe some downstream changes on top of this uh, repository. And then you automatically generate the content of the disk git uh, repository. Uh, even though it sounds almost the same, uh, it's much easier. Actually, when I was uh, maintaining the FTP daemon, I did exactly the same just for myself, but it was a little fragile because it was a shell script. So this time it uh, should be more robust, and I hope it will work. And uh, finally, what Packet can do for you, as I said, it's about partial automation, and people often ask me if Packet can generate the spec file for them, and the answer is no. Because uh, in general case, it's impossible to generate the spec file. For example, in the project I maintain, the spec file simply contains information that cannot be found anywhere else. So it's impossible to generate it if there is nothing uh, you can use as a source. But uh, you can still use all those uh, you know, utilities for generating uh, Ruby packages, Rust packages, Python packages, etc., etc. Okay, but uh, this still uh, looks like a lot of work. Yes. Microphone, please. Yep. Sorry. Oh, uh, there. Um, theoretically, if they had a make file that had a duster option, couldn't you just make dirt to a temp directory and then figure out what it installed when you did a make install? Yes, in case the project has make file, it can, uh, it should be possible to determine what uh, it installs, right. but uh, for example, we don't have makefile. We just don't. No, I'm saying if I, I'm doing it to a, a, a GitHub account, it probably has a makefile. If I do a make install, that's there. You could generate a spec file based on the file paths that were installed. Well, that's the, the problem. It doesn't work like this for every project. Like, you can have. Uh, as you have the gem to RPM, Rust to RPM, you could probably have something like make to RPM that would use make files. But for example, the project I work on, we have just setup.py, but setup.py does not contain all the information because it's not uh, supposed to be used as a system-wide installation. So the spec file contains some data that cannot be found anywhere else. So it's pretty complicated to do this for any software project. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, st still it's a lot of, lot of typing in uh, terminal, so can we do better than this? And of course, uh, with cloud, because that's the current answer to anything. Uh, so uh, you can use Packet as a service. 
It's available on uh, GitHub in the marketplace under continuous integration and uh, you can install it and then enable it for your repository. It uh, currently has only a few features. The first one is uh, built on a push. So whenever you create a new pull request in your uh, project and you push to this, uh, this branch, it will trigger a build in our community build service so you can immediately see if the project still at least builds. It looks like this. It's very simple. So you push and uh, in few minutes or hours, you should get RPM. Now, why am I saying few hours, maybe? Well, the community build service is sometimes a little busy. This is the task queue. But uh, if you are from some, for example, if you are from US, uh, you are lucky because the peak is usually during the working hours in Europe. So if you work during some other hours, you should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the unfortunate thing about uh, the community build service working with uh, Packet is that uh, in order to somehow manage the build instances, each user uh, in the community build service can run only seven builds in parallel. And since Packet uses only single user for all the projects, it can build uh, only seven proje projects in parallel. So if Packet becomes popular, this will become a problem. And uh, these are the features that it uh, should have or will have. The first one is the blue. The blue one, it should uh, automatically create uh, the updates as I was uh, showing uh, earlier. So whenever it receives a webhook from GitHub, it should create the PR automatically. But there is a problem. When you create the new release, you can just wait. There is nothing you can observe. There is uh, nothing you can uh, do in order to uh, somehow check that packet is working. There is simply nothing. Uh, all you can do is to contact upstream developers and ask them, hey, is there any log in your cluster? So that's, uh, that's a pity. <laughs> uh, I tried to use this feature. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. So I had to uh, generate the updates uh, by hand. Now, uh, the other feature that uh, should work is uh, the other way around. When you change uh, the spec file, for example, in uh, this git, this happens a lot when we have, uh, for example, mass rebuilds before Fedora release. There is a, some new uh, entry in the change log, so you need to propagate this change to upstream and Packet, again, should automatically create a pull request for the upstream uh, repository containing these changes. Again, I can show you how it looks like. Uh, so you can see this is the upstream repository, OS build, and uh, when there was a change in uh, Python packaging, rebuilt for Python 3.8. Packet automatically generated uh, this pull request uh, on GitHub, so I, can, I could just merge it, and uh, the downstream and upstream spec files were synchronized. OK, so yes, and uh, Finally, this is not yet implemented. It should also create the new RPM automatically and propose it as an update. 
from what I've heard from the Packet developers, this is currently blocked on the uh, authentication system we use uh, in uh, our Fedora build service and update service, and I hope they are working on it. Okay, this is what I was talking about. And uh, of course, there are still some unresolved questions. So for example, what to do with uh, RPM changelog? This is something, again, everybody has a different opinion. So there is simple no uh, general way to uh, generate this, the changelog so that everybody is happy. I'm personally happy with uh, one line saying that uh, there is update to the newest uh, upstream version, but uh, some maintainers want uh, a list of new features or something like this. So again, something that is uh, very difficult to do in general. <coughs> some future plans. So uh, as I have already mentioned during the talk, uh, there are still some uh, problems uh, with current implementation, so we should, or they should uh, mostly stabilize and fix bugs. Uh, I hope uh, they will improve the user experience because, as I said, when you do thing, when you do something and it doesn't work, you have no idea what went wrong. For example, there were failing uh, copper builds for a few weeks and we had no idea what's wrong and we couldn't do anything about it. So I hope this will get better. And uh, finally, this is something I'm uh, really looking forward. They promised to spin Fedora VM for each copper build so that when you have the RPM, you can actually run some integration tests because I think, at least for me, that's the point of building the RPM so I can test that it actually still works with the rest of the system. So that would be really, really nice. Finally, uh, the Packet uh, developers, they would like to hear your input. So first of all, is it interesting for you? Then, if yes, uh, are you willing to include the packet uh, YAML configuration file in your, uh, in your upstream repository? And, uh, or, and are you interested in uh, the information if it's still, uh, if it is still possible to build it for Fedora and if it works uh, with the rest of the system? You can use uh, their uh, GitHub issues. I use them a lot. Here you can see the URL, <laughs> github.com slash packet service, or you can use uh, IRC channel or this uh, email. Yeah, I was a little bit faster than I expected. So thank you, that was it. Um, if the goal is to automatically also build upstream stuff, I think Dan's um, solution actually would fit for 70 or 80% of upstream software, uh. which is better than to do everything manually. But, and the other thing, uh, I was wondering, so how would that solve your FTP um, program issue where you had 50 patches? So uh, I, That's I the understand. approach with uh, source git. Uh, you can create a GitHub repository with the sources and uh, you mark the commit that is the upstream release and then on top of it you have all those patches but this time as commits and then you generate the content of this Git repository from this uh, Git repository, standard Git repository. Uh, it's actually easier than... Uh, but no uh, automatic pull request is sent to upstream. 
No, in this case not, because Upstream uh, releases uh, new versions as tarballs and there is no uh, Upstream repository. For projects with uh, Git repository, oh yeah, I should probably. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, in this case they don't have a Git repository, but what if you have a project with 50 patches, yeah, so then, uh, there is a GitHub or whatever. Repository. Yes, for example, if there is a project that has a GitHub repository and don't want to include the packet.yaml file, you would fork the project and then you would again rebase the commits with the packet uh, YAML file, spec file, and downstream patches. So whenever there is a new release, you just pull in the changes from the upstream repository and again rebase the patches. I know it sounds almost the same, but when I was maintaining these packages, it was actually much easier than maintaining all those files by hand. Hi. Yeah, so I wanted to ask, because you mentioned adding a packet.yaml file, which is necessary, but there's also this spec file, and I wanted to ask whether there are restrictions to the spec file, like, must it be like just one source? Can it have other sources? Patches because it's all that's all going to the upstream repository that's not really pulled from the Fedora side in, in Pagger, right? Yes, uh, actually, you don't even have to uh, uh, have the spec file in the upstream repository, they have a concept of like uh, actions or hooks, so when they trigger some action, they can. Uh, run some uh, little script that is written in uh, the YAML file, so you can use curl, for example, to download the spec file from somewhere else. So basically, you don't have to even include it in the upstream repository, but the packet.yaml file is uh, mandatory. And if, you don't w if they don't want to include even the YAML file, then you have to fork it and use the source grid approach. Okay, two questions. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> about automatic versioning. You said uh, that Pocket automatically increases the version, but version of uh, different packages uh, may be vary. I mean, uh, schema of uh, versioning. So <laughs> how do you deal if uh, not, not if, then your uh, packet fails the versioning. Yes, so uh, this is again a complicated uh, question. And again, you can use custom command. For example, we use, uh, or we, we did use a Python script to generate the new version, and packet would just call this uh, script to generate the version for it, because in general case, you have no idea how to, how to automatically generate the new version. So whenever upstream uses some uh, unknown or specific uh, versioning, they can always uh, include their own script to generate the version. Okay, thanks. And the second question, uh, any plans for Non-Fedora specs. Non-Fedora specs. Uh, very good question. I was wondering about this as well, but I don't think they have uh, any plans uh, right now. No. Because they are pretty busy just uh, implementing uh, features around Fedora, so I think they don't have any plans right now. Unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I was uh, thinking about this as well because, for example, I was maintaining Wireshark and they have a spec file in their upstream repository and it's uh, possible to use it with both SUSE and Fedora. Therefore, I don't think they would be interested in uh, change log entries uh, with uh, Fedora rebuilt or something like this. So. I mean, in the end, 
<clears throat> there are already a lot of CI systems like uh, Travis or Circle CI or AppVayer or something like this. So some projects are willing to add even more configuration files for CI stuff, but I think you might be able to look at these files actually and somehow if the automatic stuff works and normally you have built stuff in there, use this to do this um, integration stuff. And second, if you build stuff, you need, of course, to make sure that there are no false positives. So maybe there's some kind of database where you um, lock if there was, was a successful build and then only afterwards, if it breaks in the future, then you report issues and not uh, before, but uh, <laughs> to avoid false positives, but uh, Yeah, knows? I'm pretty sure there is a lot of uh, efforts like this. Uh, as I said, when I was a package maintainer, I tried to implement something like this myself, and I tried to use uh, whatever was available. But as I said, none of this uh, works for every project. So this is a brand new project to solve this again. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, there is one over there. Um, I missed some of the talk. Maybe this had, has been answered before. In Packet as a Service, are there any plans to, um, to allow Koji builds instead of just copper builds? Yes, there is. Uh, but there is a problem that if you want to trigger Koji build and body update, you need to authenticate yourself using Kerberos. And uh, as far as I know, there is a problem with running Kerberos inside of uh, OpenShift uh, cluster right now. So they're trying to debug it, uh, what, what's wrong or how, how to do, do this. Uh, but uh, currently, there is no uh, no plan to, or n no specific date I could promise you when this w uh, will be available. Okay. Yeah, that and that's good. that's just for that's just for Koji builds. Thank you. Mm. So if there are no more questions, thank you for listening. <laughs>